So today's project is we're going to work on a little catch can. When I put gas in my hot rod, sometimes a little gas drips out and falls on the rug. The, actually, the spout is in the trunk of the hot rod. So the gas drips out, drips on the carpet, and it smells up the whole carpet, and it's kind of yucky. So I'm going to build a little catch can that kind of slips on the filler neck. And uh, when I take the pump out, and, and gas that drips and dribbles will go right to this little catch can. I can wipe it out, and everything is zippy cool. So that's what we're going to work on today. So I got this piece of aluminum pipe or tubing left over from my project. Um, can't remember what it was. Might have been way back in the olden days when I was working on the jet bike. So I'm just going to cut a chunk off of that, and that'll be the start. All right, so I've got this piece. It's five inch by uh, 0.125, which is an eighth of an inch wall thickness. It's 6061 T6 aluminum, and uh, like I said, I had it left over from a project. So basically, it's already paid for. So I'm going to need to leave like a or a hole saw, kind of a, a three inch hole in this area here somewhere. So the can needs to be probably, I'm going to guess, uh, let's go with eight inches. Might be a little long. Not gonna, just, let's go with seven, lucky number seven. All right, mark it off at seven. The end was pretty straight, so I'm just going to kind of go with that. I could wrap something around it and make a straight edge. Maybe I'll do that. Okay. I'm sure a lot of you guys have done this before, so um, okay, stay. Right, I got this piece of cardboard that I cut square on the stomp shear. So I'm just going to wrap it around. And I get the overlap even all the way around here so I know I am reasonably square all the way around with my marks. So we'll go around. Get it all the way. There we go. All right, over to the band saw. This is actually a horizontal saw, and I have it tilted up with a table on it that I made. I really need to get a vertical band saw one of these days. quick we're going to just kind of go just hit the edges here hit the ends any unevenness from the saw cuts and everything just kind of take some of that out you know this end is going to be cut and trimmed and this is going to have a plate so it does not super critical but we're just going to kind of do it a little bit make sure you're wearing your safety glasses Quick deburr on the inside. 
You machinist guys know what this is. That's a inside a little deburring tool. There we are. Zippy zippy needle. That's a new word. Just made it up. There we go. I like to do that just so you're not you know cutting your fingers and everything else while you're doing the rest of the work on this thing. Alright. Alright, we got a piece of eighth inch flat stock. Just gonna trace around here and you see that? Alright. Okay, back over to the trusty bandsaw. machinist told me once when your band's on always make sure if something slips the band the, the the saw the saw goes you know past your fingers not like straight into your fingers he had four fingers sometimes I'll use a block of wood or something to help me push works good I'll take it over to the disc sander and I'll just kind of kiss off some of the rough spots, get it sort of round again, get it ready for weld. Check our size, looks pretty good. I put a little chamfer on there so when we weld it, we'll have a little bit of a chamfer for the weld penetration and what it should be zippy. You notice I use the term zippy a lot. I don't know why, I just do. All right, I'm gonna take a little of an abrasive pad. this with a wire brush also. I left the disc oversized just a little bit because what I'll wind up doing is when I weld this I'll do mostly a fusion weld and use the extra little bit of material that I left on the outside diameter as filler. So I Probably won't need to use too much filler rod. There we go. Okay. I think we're almost ready to weld. Alright, I think we're ready to weld here. So I'm going to be using my Synchrowave 250 welder from Miller. It's an oldie but goodie. I bought it used 20 years ago and it was probably maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 years old then. So. It's probably one of the first series of synchrowave welder that came out, but still works good. I've always, you know, some of the companies I've consulted for, I've always specified Miller welders when we start them up and get them going. Uh, they're just reliable. Uh, the other welder companies are probably great too. I just always like the blue. Uh, 
4043 aluminum wire. Hopefully we don't need too much because we left that extra extra material um, to use as uh, filler. So let's tack it up and see how things go. Mess up the camera too bad. Try. Yeah, here we go. Aluminum transfers heat really fast, so you really need to get your part warmed up pretty well if you can for a very well. So by doing a bunch of tack welds around, it'll hold it down and it'll also kind of preheat the material. A piece of wood because it's burning again. Keep your wire brushes separate, aluminum on aluminum. Uh, don't mix your materials. Don't use a steel brush on aluminum or stainless steel. Keep them separated. I use the right, right on the brush, aluminum, stainless steel, steel. And there's never any doubt.
close in. Ah. Alright, so next step is to come up with uh, some sort of design. I thought about just kind of just doing a uh, just straight diagonal cut. That's got no style, it's kind of boring, so I figured I was just kind of scribbling on here. I thought, well, maybe we'll just kind of do a nice graceful deal there. So, first thing we're going to do is going to get ourselves a, a line. So, get ourselves a line on here. Cool. Go. Go across and transfer the line to the other side. We want this to be sort of nice, right? So that's 180 from the other side there. All right. Now we never throw anything away around here. Thanks, Orville. Kind of fold it in half. Put the fold on my line. Fold, there's the line. Send that baby around on the tape. Pretty exciting stuff, huh? Okay. So I got my my mark. So want a little bit of the Do we want two inches should be a fair amount of drippage. Alright, so my mark's there. So basically I want to start from here, come down with some sort of zippy contour. Something that looks kinda cool. Yeah, that'll work. All right, take this guy up of there. Now what we have to do is fold it in half, grab my scissors. So what I need to know in life, I learned in kindergarten. But they don't make that cool paste that you used to be able to eat. Alright, so oh, there we go. So now I can have to do one of these deals. This gets boring, just fast forward. Or turn it off. Or to something more exciting like 
like uh, Stony Ridge Farmer. There you go. He's a good guy. I like his stuff. All right. Should have erased my other color before I did this, but. There we have it. Cool. There's our design. We'll cut the hole out after we cut this. Alright, so I got a piece of some aluminum I beam head laying around from a again previous job. Never throw anything away. In, in metal work, the only scraps you have are like really teeny weeny scraps and you throw them in the trash or the recycle bin. Everything else is a remnant. So this is a remnant. Alright. A little foam just to cushion it. So probably cut it pretty well just on the line sometimes you take a little fine tape I can get the end off and it helps to make a more graceful line hopefully this is decent tape I just got it all right so we start and you kind of follow it around. Kind of like when you were a kid and you were painting flames on your old Mustang in the driveway with a rattle can. All right, that gives me a little, a little better line to follow. It's just a catch can for, for gas. It's not a piece of art. It's all right. All right, next up is uh, we'll get our saber saw out here. safety glasses. Get the speed up to maximum power. There we go. Little edge lube. You can use WD-40 too. This is just not as uh, wet and liquidy. Probably a hundred different ways you could cut this. It's just a few way I feel like doing it today.
and block your view, huh? Sorry. Alright, there we go. Working out alright. Bear. for a whole saw. Bloop. All right, got it all set up in, uh, on the mill. So, um, we'll see how it goes. I set it on a little bit lower speed just so it's not going 100 miles an hour and like when something goes bad, everything just goes flying all over. deal to hold that in place just sacrificially go into the plate a little bit it's no big deal it's better than going into the table and uh, just held it like that clamp so there we go we'll deburr it and uh, uh, should we do some engine turning on the outside we'll see how ambitious I feel Thanks for sticking with me while I did this. If you want any more detail on, on what I did there, uh, just let me know. I can do something else with that focuses more on that. We're gonna go get some gas in the morning, so we'll try her out. And uh, should work all right. It's just a catch can, right? So, yeah, all right. This is where everybody always says the, 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 the punches and the pounds and the likes and the subscribes and all that silliness. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, I just thank you for watching. See you next time. Let's go take a ride.
camera. Alright. See my car. Not so bad, huh? Put that on there like that. I got lazy, I didn't wind up doing the engine turning. Maybe in future project. That's it. Even though I have the drip can, I don't want to drip anyhow. Step back on. Oh, I left the can on there. Oh well. Cute.